can go from rectangular to smaller. Um, using r equals square root of x squared plus y squared, theta equals tangent inverse of y over x. If you have a point in polar system, you can get back to rectangular by using x is equal to r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, And we did parametric equations because if you simply replace theta by t, that is a set of parametric equations. Do we agree? R cosine t, R sine t, parametric equations. That would correspond to a circle. How do we represent a function in rectangular systems? Very good. Y equals f of x. In polar, r is some function of theta. Um, if y is equal to 2, what does it represent in the rectangular system? Y equals two. That is a function, but it is a very simple one. That's an easy question. Y equals two. What does it represent in the rectangular In other words, regular x, y thing? A line. So a rectangular coordinate system is the regular x y plane. It is a line. What kind of line are this? A horizontal line. It's a horizontal line. Okay. A simple y equals two, y equals a. A line specifically horizontal line. Well, lines define a rectangle. Do we agree? One would hope. Okay. Over to polar. R equals some number. Let's just say. This. What would that correspond to? Here it is a line. There it, it should represent a circle, right? Um, everything in polar system or polar coordinate system, instead of lines in rectangular system, we have circles in polar system. And of course, you can go from now to here, but that's beside the point. But what I want you to understand is y equals a in rectangular system represents fundamental line in a rectangle. There, the circles in polar system. Good. So, if you have a coordinate. A simple example before we go to graphing. Um, if we have negative three comma two in the rectangular system, I can move it to all the coordinate system easy. R would simply be square root of x squared plus y squared, which 
square root of minus three squared plus two squared. Square root of 13. How do we find theta? Theta is simply tangent inverse of 2 over negative 3. We need to calculate the problem for that. But before we get to that, what mode should you set? When you do tangent inverse of two over three degrees or radians, degrees. Um, Alison has to do that, um, it has to be in degrees, but even if you did it in radians, you can easily convert it to degrees. One would hope so. Yes. What should you do to go from degrees to radians? or radians to degrees, you multiply by Michael number two. 180 divided by five. 180 divided by five. Um, what is that number? X is negative three, Y is two. So somewhere over here. Just a taste of calculus three. That's a vector. Um, and over on the other side, um, Polar system, where origin is right in the middle, right here. And R is square root of 13, which is probably somewhere on that circle. How much? 3.6. 3.6 makes sense. So somewhere over there. Now, theta is 33.69. So where would theta be here relative to this side? Oh, oh. Is that right? It should be negative that is three point six nine. Okay. Make any sense. So it can't be here, yes, because over here. Um, everything is positive, sign, cosine, tangent. Um, if you look at it here, A, S, T, C. Everything is positive, sign is positive, tangent is positive, the other side is positive, uh, cosine is positive. Yes, do you remember? Um, so where do we put that negative, or how do we put that negative angle? The same as you, 360 minus 33. Um, 360 minus 33, what does that give you? 326.31. 326.31. Probably somewhere here. Right? Yes. But could it be there also?
Yes or no? Yes. Um, so that point corresponds to a point of a hit. Why? Because of the negative angle that we have. Um, what is the period of tangent? Pi. Pi, right? It has a period of pi. So pi is over here, minus 33. Go this way, it's going to be somewhere there. Um, so once you find the value of theta, you can always use regular transformations uh, to change that negative 33 to a positive angle, things that you learn from pre calculus. Good. Thank you very much. You gave it. Someone gave that. Yeah, but like, how did you get to that angle? What did you put so this in one? Yeah, how did you... Oh, tangent inverse of what is tangent inverse 2 over 3? In the grace mode, Negative 33.69. Negative 33.69. Oh, sorry, you said degrees, sorry. So just tangent inverse of two thirds. Uh, all I need is that in radians board or degrees board. Of it's just the positive version. Yeah. What is it? 33.69. In degrees board. In yeah. So, Bryce, do you know how to put it in yeah. degrees board? So if you put it in the grace mode, you would get 33.69. And there we have negative 33.69. So it should be on this side. Um, good. If we have um, theta equals pi over two, had I gotten pi over two, then what value of theta, um, excuse me, what value of x and y would give me pi over 2? Y has to be something. Oh, x has to be something. That's my hint. What should x be so that I get pi over 2? Oh, sorry. It should be pi. Uh, should be pi. X, X should be one. Mm -hmm. I need pi over two. In other words, no degrees. Say it for a week. Yeah, what is the value of X? would have to be zero. X would have to be zero. X has to be zero, um, and Y could be any value because that would be an infinite number. And if you put X is equal to zero, R would simply be Y, correct? Yes, because that would become zero, you would have Y. So X is zero, Y could be any. What does that represent in the rectangular system? X is zero, Y should be anything. It's on the vertical axis. It's on the vertical axis. So Y could be any value, X is zero. But if I pick a point right here, uh, where will it land? Let's say y is one. What is r? Louder. One. One. So that point will come right over there. Good. Uh, let's pick a negative number. X is zero. Y is any negative number. So I'm going to pick negative two. Well, if you plug in there, what is R? Two. Two. What is the angle? Five degrees. Pi over two. 
right? Um, so R would be two pi over two pi. What you've got to know is it could be that point or that point. Do you agree? So just because you know uh, the values of R and theta doesn't mean that you know the exact curve. What you need to know is the period of the curve also. When we did parametric equations, I distinctly recall that one graph at the laminate curve infinity, um, we drew zero to two pi or something, and I changed it to eight pi, 10 pi, and it started drawing one on top of the other. So you've got to know exactly where or what sign um, it would have. So here you have negative two, tangent inverse of y over x, negative two over zero. We've got to pull that negative out. So it must lie here, good? If it is positive two, it's simply tangent inverse of two over zero. So you've got to pay attention to the sign. First thing, likewise, if y is zero and x is any number that you can think of. Where would it be? Y is zero, and x could be any number. On the x-axis. Uh, Jaden, do you want to give me a number? Just any number. Any number. Five. Five, okay. Five comma zero. Y would be zero. X would be five squared. Five squared, y root. Um, well, five squared is five. Um, uh, imagine that it's another set. If I was in Beatles, I would have said, imagine all these stuff. Never mind, uh, it should be right there. Alex, did you get it? <laughs> or too young. Um, so it is going to be right there. Why tangent inverse of zero is? Easy question. Tangent inverse of zero is? Zero. Zero, right there. Okay. Um, Give me a negative number. Right, why don't you give me a negative number? A negative number. Uh, negative four. Negative four. <coughs> negative four for y. X is zero. Oh, sorry. Negative four for x. Y is zero. Negative four squared is four. Um, so radius four. But when you plug it in theta, theta is tangent inverse of negative uh, four <clears throat> and zero. So before you put it in the calculator, you've got to pull that negative outside. So negative tangent inverse of zero. So it has to be on the opposite side. Good. Yes, no, maybe. So every point that you see here will pretty much translate to Point there. And one might one might ask, well, then why bother representing things in the fuller system? Natural question to ask. Well, it is an extension to higher dimensions. There are two ways to look at things in higher dimensions. You could be a square 
or it could be a circle. Uh, who wants to be a squire? No one, right? Everyone wants to be a circle. A bit more flexibility. So higher dimensions, you can either be a hypercube or you could be a, a sphere. So those two would be separate systems. In some cases, spherical is better. Cylindrical is better. Um, if you are on planet Earth and you are trying to see how other planets are moving, easier system will be which one? Rectangular? Or Either. Or, or. Because you're standing, you know, somewhere on Earth and you want the planets moving, so you've got angles. So polar might be better. Uh, but if you're standing here and I just want to know, you know, how far this printer is from me, do I want polar system there? You can use it, but it's silly. Right? Working hard versus working smart. So, if you do have to do things in polar system, then whatever we learned in branch equations can be extended to polar system and we can do calculus in polar system. Does that make sense? So, you don't always have to go to polar coordinate system. But in some cases, that is better than this. And if you have to make that choice and be smarter about things, doing calculus there is possible. Good. And that's what we're about to do. I'll be clear. Okay. Um, and do keep in mind, just like how we can take a and rewrite it in terms of y and x, you can do the same thing with all the uh, equations also. Um, when I plot, I'll show you how to do that. 